new to the LJS podcast or just haven't gotten connected before, then go and subscribe at learnjazzstandards.com slash newsletter. Become part of our jazz community and get our free ebook, A Jazz Guide to Practicing. LearnJazzStandards.com slash newsletter. All right. Hey, everybody. My name is Brent. You're listening to the LJS Podcast. Welcome. And if this is your first time listening to the LJS Podcast, I want to give you an especially warm welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. And if you're a regular listener to the podcast, thanks for coming week after week and and listening. The LJS Podcast is all about giving out free jazz education, jazz tips, jazz advice, helping you become a better jazz musician because we're all in this together. We're all on this path, this journey to musicianship, to better musicianship, and we all love jazz. And this is a jazz community. Uh, So I'm just glad that everybody's here. You know, I got an email this past week, and I get lots of emails from jazz musicians wanting to know how to become a better jazz musician, how to become a better jazz player. And I try to get to all the emails I can. Uh, Because I get so many, oftentimes I'm just leaving links to our blog posts and podcast episodes uh, because I just can't get to all of them and spend the necessary time. I wish I could. But I got one in particular that had me thinking a little bit. And the question that this... Uh, subscriber asked was what should I be focusing on when listening to jazz what should I be focusing on when listening to jazz I thought that was uh, a simple but really great question so on today's episode 41 we're going to be talking all about how to become a better jazz musician just by listening just by listening. And we've talked about this a lot on this podcast, a lot on the blog, if you're a follower. And and you know that I always preach that listening to jazz music is the most important thing. In fact, uh, just a few episodes ago, episode 39, we had a very special guest on, jazz master Don Hahn. And I was prying at him, you know, what should students be doing to, uh, you know, learn the jazz language better, to become better jazz musicians? What can they be practicing? And as much as I pried at him, he always just came back to just listen a lot. Because at the end of the day, if you don't listen to the music, you're not really going to get it. And by listening, it's going to become internalized. And, and that's really the way to learn jazz. It's the way that all the jazz greats have learned from each other is just by listening. So it's a really important topic uh, to talk about listening. And in today's episode, I'm going to be referencing a blog post I actually did uh, several months back called How to Listen to Music with Intention. So if you're more of a reader or you want to have more extensive show notes, uh, you can go ahead and and go to learnjazzstandards.com. Uh, go to the to the search bar and look up how to listen to music with intention. But I'll also be leaving show notes today on the website. Go to learnjazzstandards.com podcast and find this episode 41. So without further ado, I want to talk about how to listen to jazz, uh, what to be focusing on when you're listening to jazz, and how just doing that can help you become a better jazz musician. So I've already stated the obvious to you that if you want to be a jazz musician, if you want to improve at any kind of music, really, you have to be listening to the music. That's kind of the obvious first step. And assuming that you are a jazz musician or you're practicing this music or listening to this podcast, you like jazz. So naturally, you're going to listen to the music. But I want to make a distinction between two different kinds of listening. There are two different kinds of listening in my mind. And the two are passive listening and active listening. Okay, passive listening and active listening. Now, what is passive listening? Passive listening is you turn on the music in the background while you're working on other things, uh, and it's not really the focus of of your activity, really. It's just out there in the background. Perhaps you're 
uh, driving your car somewhere and talking with friends, but you have music on in the car. That's passive listening. You're more focused on talking with your friend, perhaps, than actually listening to the music. Now, that's not to say that you can't be focusing on the music while you're in transit somewhere. That can be a way uh, to listen intentionally. But in general, anything that's distracting you where the music isn't the main focus, then it's kind of passive listening. Let's just say that you're at a, a restaurant and there's live jazz music. Well, you're probably not completely focusing on the music still. It's background music. You're eating your meal. You're with your friends or, or your family, whoever, eating a dinner. And so it's not the main event. It's not the main focus in your conscious mind, okay? So now what is active listening? Well, it's the exact opposite of that. It's where the music is the main event. It's exactly what you're focusing on. There's no distractors. Now, I want you to think for a second about going to the the movie theater, the cinema, to watch a movie. You go there with the sole intention of watching a film, sitting there for two hours, gazing at a giant screen and and dedicating your focus to that motion picture for that amount of time. And you sit there and that's all you do. In fact, it'd be frowned upon if you were to be doing other things or talking to someone while you were watching that film. That's what you do. You go there to watch that film. And I'm simply suggesting... That if you want to get the most out of listening to jazz, if you want your jazz listening to turn into jazz practicing, you will need to treat it the same as you would going to sit down and watch a movie. Jazz musicians need to dedicate some time just to listen to music and make that the main event. And, and like I said before, that doesn't mean you can, you know, you're only just sitting there and listening to music. Sometimes you could be driving somewhere. Maybe uh, you live in a big city like me. And so you're taking the train to a location and you're listening to music. You can still be pretty focused on music doing those things, but you want to eliminate distractions as much as, much as possible. So we want to be active listeners of the music okay active listening is important to make jazz listening from being passive listening to active listening and active listening equals jazz practicing okay it's it's, it's one of the best practices you can do is simply listening so we need to treat our listening with the same kind of intentions as we would to go watch a movie for example now i also want to suggest uh, before I talk more about how exactly uh, you should listen and what you should be listening for when you're listening to jazz, I want to suggest making intentions about what you are going to listen to. Because a lot of times we just put on the music that we want to listen to or that we like, and that's really good. But we should also have some intention with that as well. We should make lists of albums that are important to listen to you know look up albums that are pivotal to jazz you know maybe look up some albums that are from the early jazz era like the swing era or even uh dixie music and and listen to that see how that is listen to bebop listen to cool jazz listen to free jazz listen to different styles so that you're educated about the music and, and look up albums and intentionally listen to them don't always go to the albums that you're you know, you specific you specifically enjoy, and don't always look to the albums that are either old or new. Look at both. If you tend to listen only to jazz from the 1950s, uh, the 1940s, you know, older jazz, maybe consider listening to some modern jazz as well. I think it's really important to understand that jazz is really an evolved music. It's really come a lot of different places and branched off to a lot of different things. And I think it's good to constantly be listening to all the different eras of jazz to truly be educated about it. So go out of your comfort zone sometimes and listen to a lot of different kinds of music and make goals. Now, I also want to say another thing about this is sometimes less is more when you're listening. Uh, I tend to like to camp out on 
a record for a while. If I'm listening to a jazz record, I like to kind of camp on it for a while. I don't really like to listen to tons and tons and tons of different music all the time because really I want to be getting something out of what I'm listening to. Currently, I'm listening to uh, Boss Tenors. It's an uh, album with Gene Ammons and Sonny Stitt. And I've listened to that many times before, but I've been camping out on it for a while because I just really want to get inside and of what they're doing and listen to what they're doing and try to get something out of the solos that they're playing and inside they're playing. So I'm really camping out on that album. So I'd also say that's another good thing to do is just to focus on one album at a time. Now, of course, if you have a gig coming up or if you've been to a jam session and you didn't know a tune, then perhaps you should be also focusing on listening to that stuff so that you can actually learn that music that you need to learn. That's also obviously an important thing to do. Okay, so quick summary of everything I've talked about so far. Take some time to be an active listener rather than a passive listener. Turn your jazz listening into jazz practicing so that you can listen to the music with intention and get something out of it. Make a plan of what you're going to listen to. Listen to albums intentionally and get out of your comfort zone sometimes. Listen to some music that you don't normally listen to so that you can be fully educated about jazz music. And also sometimes the less is more approach is the best way. Rather than listening to tons of albums or an album every day or even every week sometimes, it could be better to just camp out on one album so you can try to get as much out of it as you possibly can and, and study it diligently. Hey everybody, just taking a quick break from today's show to talk to you about our e-course, 30 Days to Better Jazz Playing. You know, I get emails almost every day from jazz musicians asking the questions, what do I practice and how do I practice? They know where they want to be in their jazz playing, they know how they want to sound, they're just not exactly sure how to get there. And that's why me and the LGS team have created our new e-course, 30 Days to Better Jazz Playing. 30 Days to Better Jazz Playing is an audio e-course that brings you through 30 days of focused, goal-oriented practicing where you're going to be working on things that will actually improve your jazz playing. This course is designed for all instruments and for all skill levels and is really great for anybody looking to practice with purpose and to make real improvement in their jazz playing. If you want to learn more about this e-course, go to learnjazzstandards.com slash 30 days. That's learnjazzstandards.com slash three zero days. I hope to see you in the course. Okay, now let's talk about what you should be focusing on when you're listening to jazz. Because once you've become an active listener... You want to be listening for certain things, right? You want to be asking questions so that you can draw something from the material you're listening to. So the first thing that you want to focus on is pretty obvious, but it's what song are you listening to? Do you know what the title of it is? Have you heard it before? Do you know how to play that song yourself? Uh, is it considered a jazz standard or perhaps an original composition that you're listening to? Ask yourself those basic questions. What song are you listening to? Now, another question to ask is, who is the artist? Okay, who is the artist? Do you know who whose album it is? Is it a John Coltrane album? Is it a Hank Mobley album? Is it a Wynton Kelly album? Is it a, a Miles Davis album? Uh, and then who is in the band? Who's playing? Who's on bass? Who's on drums? Who's on guitar? Who's on trumpet? Whatever instrument it is, ask yourself who those artists are. And then try to identify in the playing what makes their playing, their sound unique. You know, uh, John Coltrane, you know, if you're listening to John Coltrane, what makes his sound so unique? I mean, John Coltrane has a very a uh, powerful voice on his instrument. So what is, about that makes it so powerful to you? You know, what 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 makes it so remarkable to your ears? Uh, wh whatever musician you're listening to, ask yourself that question. So A, be educated about who's in the band and, and who you're listening to. That's important. That's step number one. And then two, what about them makes them so unique? Okay. Now, the next question is once, you know, you know, you know what the artists are, you know what song you're listening to. 
how is the song structured? Is it a 16-bar form? Is it a 32-bar form? Is it an AABA form? Or is it something else entirely? Uh, is the song a blues? Um, you know, these are minor details, perhaps, but they are important, especially if you're a jazz player, a jazz musician. These are the things that, while you're in a playing situation, you're going to want to be, you know, in the know about, right? If you're playing a 32-bar song, it's important for you to know it's a 32-bar song. If it is an AABA form, it's important for you to recognize that so that you understand and are knowledgeable about what you're playing. Um, you know, wh when you're listening, do you know where the top of the chorus comes in? You know, like, are you keeping track of the form while you're listening? That's, that's important. You know, again, that, that's the difference between passive listening and active listening is when you're actively listening, that's a minor detail that you should be really paying attention to. Oh, we're back at the top of the form. Oh, we're here at the bridge. Those are the things that you should try to be honing in on and figuring out as you go, whether you already know the song or you don't know the song. Okay. So Know what song you're listening to, know what artists you're listening to, and try to figure out how is the song structured? What is the skeleton of the song? And then next, can you identify the chord progressions? Are you able to recognize uh, the, the song form, how it goes? Again, maybe you know the song already, and so then you can just sometimes follow along in your head with where you're at harmonically within the form. Um, but you may not know the song, and so maybe you can try to figure it out as you go. I mean, can you hear a 2-5-1 chord progression in there? Does the song start on the 1 chord? Does the song start on the 2 chord? Uh, perhaps does it start on the 4 chord? There are songs like that. Think about uh, Just Friends, for example. It starts on the 4 chord of the song. If, the, if you're playing it in G major, uh, it would start on the C major, would be uh, the first chord of that song. Uh, do you hear a one six two five chord progression? You know where does it go now? If there's a bridge, does it go to the relative minor? You know these are things to think about. You know, can you recognize the chord progressions? Uh, this is a great skill to practice by just listening because if you're in a playing situation where maybe you're not very familiar with a song but it's being called, then maybe you can pick it up on the fly so that while the rest of the band's playing, you're able to hear what's going on. It's ear training. It's really ear training to do that and you can do it in a safe place just you by yourself uh in your home listening to music and trying to figure it out where it's going by ear so that's a great practice to do so can you identify the chord progressions in the song um now the next question i would ask is what are the individual instruments playing now i actually find this is one of my favorite things to do when i'm actively listening to music is I'll, I'll even sometimes just turn on one song uh, on repeat and go through and listen to the different instruments you know maybe the first time i'm listening to the most obvious instrument you know maybe it's the horn player who's really you know kind of the front man playing all the melodies uh or, or the piano player the guitar player whatever the musical situation may be i'm listening to the most obvious instrument and you know focusing in on them like what are they playing and of course if it goes to another soloist i'm focusing on the next soloist and i'll listen to the song once that way and then i'll go through and listen to the song again but listen what is the piano player playing what is the comping the chordal comping instrument playing so it could be a guitar player as well or another or a vibes player or something like that but i'll really hone in to what they're doing it doesn't matter if it's not the instrument that i play because ultimately if you want to be an educated jazz musician and be the best at your instrument you want to know what the other musicians are doing too you i mean in a playing situation you don't want to be just listening to yourself you want to be listening to everybody so this is a good practice to do that you know kind of take it to the laboratory and break it down in a safe place by listening alone in your home so i'll go through and i'll listen to that piano player or the chordal instrument all the way through and, and listen to what they're doing you know how are they accompanying the other musicians how are they accompanying themselves and i'll listen in for that uh, i might listen in to see how they are responding to maybe a cue that the drummer did or or really are they following anything that the soloist did i'm listening to those things and i'm asking myself those questions then i'll go through again and i'll listen to the bass player you know if you're not a bass player Sometimes you may tend not to listen to the bass player actively. So if you are a bass player, you probably do all the time. But this is a great practice, especially for those who don't play bass, is to go through 
and try to listen to what the bass player is doing. Follow the bass player's lines, uh, how they're interacting with the drummer, how they're interacting with the rest of the band. And then I'll listen to the drums. What are the drums doing? Uh, do they switch cymbals uh, at someone's solo? Are they playing uh, different rhythmic patterns throughout? Like, what are they doing? I'll ask myself those questions because it's also important that I understand rhythmically, me being not a drummer, I understand rhythmically what's going on and how a drummer functions within a band. And I'll keep going through that, you know, whatever the the lineup of instruments is, I'll go and I'll intentionally listen. Now, I'll, I tell you, again, I said this is my favorite practice because it actually makes the music sound completely different to your ear when you go through and you focus on these different instruments. You realize what you're missing in a way that when you're only focusing on your instrument that you play, perhaps, you're kind of missing out on a lot of the music. And it kind of is kind of like looking at something in a different perspective. You know, if we're looking at the number nine, but you're on one side of the nine, it might look like a six to you. But to me, it looks like a nine. And sometimes that can be the situation that happens when you're specifically listening to different musicians in the band. Okay. Uh, and again, couple that with asking who are the actual musicians. Is it Max Roach on drums? Uh, is it Paul Chambers on bass? You know, and what makes that unique about their playing? So again, asking those questions to couple it with that. Now, another question I'll ask is, is there anything particular in the song that's standing out to me? Like, what's my favorite part? You know, uh, what is there something that I'm like, oh, that was really cool. Maybe that's something I want to go back to later and figure out on my instrument, how to play it, you know, how to apply that actually to my own playing. Or, or maybe I just want to think about it for a little bit. Wow. I mean, that was really cool when that musician reacted to the other musician that way. I mean, maybe I should try that. You know, things like this, things that you're not doing when you're just passively listening. You're not doing things like this. Actually think about what makes you enjoy that music and what stands out. Um, now, Kind of the last question is a little bit more of an emotional question. And as an artist, you should be asking emotional questions and getting a little bit in touch with your feelings. I think it's really important. If you're going to call yourself a musician, it means you're an artist. And art is really all about, you know, displaying uh, emotion by expressing things. So ask yourself, how does the music make you feel? Okay, how does the music make me feel? It's important not to dismiss it. Um... Does it make you sad or happy? But maybe dig in a little deeper. Uh, you know, what about it evokes those specific emotions out of you? It's, it's just important to be aware of these feelings. And, and going back to, you know, what makes each artist unique? You know, each artist is musician is giving out a certain vibe out of their playing. You know, what kind of vibe? You know, sometimes when I listen to John Coltrane, I always go back to John Coltrane because he has such a unique voice, sometimes it's just a very longing sound, right? It's just like, it feels like it's just coming out of his gut, you know? And, and what about that draws me there? Or how does it make me feel? Okay, so take this time to intentionally listen to these things. Okay, so really quick recap on all of the things that you should be focusing on when listening to jazz. What song are you listening to? Who are the artists? How is the song structured? Can you identify the chord, progress the chord progressions? Can you identi identify the song form? Uh, what are the individual instruments in the band playing? Go through and listen to them individually to see what they're doing and focus on them individually. Is there a particular part in the song that stands out to you that you particularly like? And how does the music make you feel? This is kind of how you should actively listen to jazz music. This can really help you internalize this music better and get something out of it. All right, that's all for today's show. I want to thank you so much for listening and for tuning in. And I want to hear from you. What do you focus on when you listen to jazz music? I don't want to just uh, have everybody listen to my opinion all the time. This is a jazz community, so feel free to 
uh, put in your input. Uh, if you're on the website, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. Now, next week, we're going to be coming out with episode 42, which is the last LJS podcast episode of 2016. So I hope to see you then. Mm-hmm.